Last year I lived the whole winter here on my boat and I would like to share with you my experiences with living on a boat in the winter in a cold climate like here in Norway. Uh, what I learned from doing this and whether I recommend doing this or not. So having spent one winter here living on my boat, I have got a pretty good idea of what it takes to live on a boat in the winter. So I thought it would be interesting to make a little video about this, to share with you my experiences living on a boat in the winter in Norway. So I'm going to start out by talking about the most obvious thing. Heating. And did I get cold or not? <laughs> Well, as you may be able to see, I have an electric heater on my boat here, which has different temperature settings, and which is more than big enough to heat this whole boat, even when it gets really cold. It's such a small space that it's quite easy to heat, even though it's very badly insulated. Uh, the windows are just one layer of thin plastic, and most of the hull is just maybe this much fiberglass. So the insulation is terrible, but since the space is so small, it's very easy to keep it warm. I did though add some insulation on top of the deck of the boat, which I did both to keep condensation away, but also to just keep it a little bit more heated inside. Now if I didn't have this electric heater, if I didn't have electricity in the marina here, then it would be a lot more difficult to live on a boat in the winter, obviously. There's many other solutions for heating, like gas or diesel heating or a wood stove. But all of those require you being there all the time to make sure it's safe and to keep it running. And they also require the importation of resources all the time. So you keep have, having to refuel with either a diesel or gas or a wood, which makes it a much bigger hassle to use. On the other hand, of course, I am reliant on having an electricity connection to heat the boat. So if I were to sail somewhere else where there's no electricity, I wouldn't be able to heat the boat at all. Which is a big downside, but on the other hand, most of the winter there's ice around here anyway, so I wouldn't be able to leave anyway. So, it works. I did actually try to install a wood stove in the boat earlier. But the wood stuff that I bought was really shitty and there's lots of smoke leaking out and it just didn't work well, so I just took it out again. Now, if you've seen my previous video about living on a boat in the winter in Norway, you may remember me talking about condensation issues being the biggest issue living on a boat in the winter. Well, since then I have figured out a lot of things about condensation and how to keep it away. So basically what I have been doing since I made the last video was to keep constant heat with this electric heater to always have it at least to keep at least the frost away so there's always a little bit of heat circulating in the boat and there's always some ventilation drying out the air. So by co keeping a constant heat you both avoid getting these really big temperature differences which cause condensation and you also dry out the air by the warm air going out and then cold dry air coming in. So basically condensation is not really a big issue as long as you have constant heat going on in the boat. But of course if you don't have an electric heater and you're relying on gas or diesel or wood, that's a lot more difficult because when you're not there you cannot heat it. So you're gonna probably have more condensation issues with those methods. But on the other hand, burning stuff does also dry out the air. So when you heat it up, it's probably gonna get more dry than if you were to heat it up, like sometimes, with electricity. So condensation is though the number one issue living on a boat. Because I had really bad condensation issues in the beginning, where there was water dripping from the ceiling and dripping on the beds, and the top bed sheet was getting wet. So 
keeping condensation away is essential. It's like the number one issue. Because if you don't, then you're gonna get mold, and mold is really unhealthy. So that's very important to avoid. So some other things I do to avoid getting too much moisture and condensation inside is to cook outside during the winter. So I actually move my gas cooking stove on deck and I cook my food out there. So overall, keeping the boat dry is quite doable. You just have to make sure that it's always heated and that you have ample ventilation. And also to make sure that you don't create lots of moisture inside by cooking food, for example. And if you do those things, it's completely dry. Basically, there's, right now there's no moisture anywhere, really. So, since everything is frozen outside, I'm not able to get any water here in the marina. So, in the summer I get my dishwashing water here, from a well. But in the winter the well is closed, because it's frozen. So I have to bring all the drinking and dishwashing water from somewhere else. Which was not really an issue last winter, because I usually went out every day or every second day anyway. So then every time I would go somewhere, I would just bring some water back here. And I would have enough water to, to keep me going. And I also use very water efficient ways of cooking and doing the dishes. And I'll make a video about this later. Of course, I don't have enough water to take a shower on the boat. <laughs> and I also don't really have a place to do it. So in the summer, I usually go swimming most days, which is super nice. But of course in the winter, it's not very tempting to go out in the icy cold water. <laughs> so I have to go somewhere else to shower as well. So what I would do is just to go to the gym and shower there. And of course doing the laundry is not gonna happen either. So I also had to bring all my dirty clothes somewhere else to wash them somewhere else. Of course there is electricity here, obviously, so that's the main thing. Electricity keeps everything running and makes everything easy. Without electricity, I think spending a winter in a Nordic climate in a boat would be really hard. It's definitely doable, but it would be definitely a struggle. Most people take their boats out of the water in Norway in the winter both to do maintenance, but also to keep their boats safe. My boat is in the water the whole winter, and the way this works is by having bubbles in the water that keep the ice away. So there's a compressor that blows air underwater, about one meter down under the surface, and that makes the warmer water from further down go up, and that keeps the ice away. And this way there's no danger of ice forming around the boat and damaging the hull on the outside. And it also actually makes the temperature inside the boat a bit warmer, because the, the warmer water goes up and a big part of the hull of the boat is in the water, so that part is heated by the water. And that's also a very important thing because of the, the true hull fittings, like the holes in the hull, where for example the, the water from the sink goes out and the cooling water from the motor goes in those fittings could potentially crack from ice. Even though they're really strong, there's always a danger of those potentially breaking. So by the water being warm, uh, it kind of removes, unless it's very, very cold, it removes the risk of ice forming in there. So for the whole winter, I have my heater running at a low setting if I'm not there, just to keep the frost away. But still, there's always a potential of the heater failing, the electricity going out, so, uh, to make sure that nothing breaks from frost, I have removed my water pump. I've taken the water out from the water pump. I've also closed all the true hole fittings. And I've basically emptied everything that holds water except for like big containers that wouldn't crack in the cold. So that way I avoid getting any, any damages from the freezing. And of course the biggest danger is getting a damage in the hull, and especially in the true hull fittings, which could potentially sink your boat in the winter. So that's also why I always keep the boat above freezing inside, to make sure that nothing in the hull freezes and cracks to make the boat sink. I actually have a friend who had a boat laying out in the winter with no heating in it, 
and a boat actually sank last winter. Another danger for the boat in the winter is actually the weight of the snow. Because if you get half a meter of snow, it actually weighs a lot. And it can potentially make the boat go far enough down for water to start entering. Uh, for example, through the water outlets on the cockpit, there's holes in the cockpit that make the rainwater and stuff go out. But if the boat goes far enough down, it actually will make water go in to the boat. So to make sure that there's not too much snow on the deck, you either have to shovel the snow off, go there regularly and get rid of the snow, or you have to hang a tarp over the boat that makes the snow fall off, which is what I have done. And this tarp also provides extra protection from the elements and a little bit of insulation. And it also makes the whole deck into a usable space. So for example, for cooking, there's no snow on deck. So I can use the deck for cooking, I can store stuff there. So it's very useful to, to have this big tarp over the whole boat. And pretty much all the other boats in the marina have the same. They have a tarp over the boat. So overall, would I recommend living on a boat in a cold climate during the winter? Well, yeah, I think actually it's quite doable as long as you have electricity and as long as you have access to, for example, a shower and a place to get drinking water. I think it's a very doable lifestyle. It's, for example, a lot easier than living in a van in the winter. So as long as you keep everything dry, have electricity and have some external resources, I think it's very doable to live on a boat in the winter, even in the north. So if you would like to learn more about my experience living on a boat, you can check out my other videos about this on my channel. And I'll also put some links in the description below. And if you learned anything from this video, please give it a like and share it with anyone else that might be interested.